My name is Lewis with Rossman Supply Group, and today I'd like to explain the difference between our parts and the parts that you may purchase from another vendor. We only buy grade A parts here. The difference between grade A parts and grade A minus parts is that an A part is a part that is considered good and likely to be good for a very long time, whereas an A minus part is a part that the manufacturer said may have issues now or may develop issues later in the future. Now, the reason most vendors buy A minus parts is price competition. It's a vicious world out there where many vendors are making maybe one to three dollars per sale. And oftentimes you can save three dollars per sale by purchasing a grade A minus part. So most vendors will buy the A minus part because 90% of the time the A minus part actually works perfectly. And in the manufacturing process it was labeled A minus by an overzealous testing method. So if you can make an extra three dollars per sale, let's say you sell a hundred screens, you've made yourself an extra three hundred bucks. Now let's do some math. Let's say you sell 90 of them successfully and there are 10 of them that are bad and you have to ship out replacements for those. Let's say it costs $7 a piece to ship 10 replacements. So that'll be $70 lost in shipping that you've paid to the customers that got the bad part. So selling an A- minus part only allowed you to make extra money on 90 sales and it cost you $7 on 10 sales. So that means you've made an extra $200 off of those 100 sales, even though you had some people where you lost money. In the end, selling A- minus parts will make a supply company more money because it's a very small minority of people that get the bad part. Now the reason that we don't sell grade A- minus parts doesn't even have to do necessarily with our ethics or wanting to get you a good product. That's part of it. But the other part of it is also our own self-interest because we also own a repair shop. As a repair shop, the equation is a little different. Let's say we have hundred repair jobs to do and we make seventy five dollars a piece off of these jobs now if we save three dollars a piece on those one hundred jobs that's a difference between seventy five hundred dollars of profit or seventy eight hundred dollars of profit now let's say that one or two of these customers files a chargeback with a supply company and with a part selling company it's customary that if you get a bad part and you file a chargeback or a complaint you have to send the part back before you'll get your money back Whereas when you purchase a service from a company, whether online or in person, if you don't like the service or it's not as described, there's nothing to give back. You don't have to give your service back. So if, a, if let's say, out of those 100 jobs, 10 people get a screen that's bad. Now, at the price of 150 per repair, and considering that the profit difference between the A- minus and the A-plus parts is $300, if two of those people ask for their money back out of the 10 that got a bad screen, our profit margin is the same as if we had used A parts. Now, let's say more of them are irritated, or let's say three or four of them want their money back, or just don't feel like waiting anymore for us to get a good part in, that would be $450 to $600 lost. So not only will we have had to deal with a bad part, not only will we have had to deal with an angry customer and a potential bad review, if we use the A minus part, we actually have a very, very high likelihood of losing money as a repair company. And the profits as a repair company per is a, is a lot higher than the profits of a supply company. So I have a vested interest in selling good parts, not just because I want you to get a good part, that's part of it obviously, but also because I want to get a good part. Because if, if I start selling A-minus parts, I will actually make less money because I'm drawing from the exact same inventory that I'm drawing from when I sell a part to you. So when you buy from us, you're not just buying from a company that sells parts to other companies that doesn't do anything else. You're buying from a company that's actually using the parts that we're selling you. And since we have this vested self-interest in our own quality, you can rest assured that you're always going to be getting a good part when you buy it. It gets worse when we discuss the iPhone 4 because of two reasons. The first one is that it's much more common to find poor parts, such as using an unoriginal LCD where you have the really thick one so that there's less adhesive between the digitizer and the LCD which causes you to have those pressure points where you touch the screen and you have exploding color or the proximity sensor is not shaded right so you put the phone in your face and it doesn't work or a low quality really bad knockoff digitizer where you touch the O key and you can't touch the P key or you touch the O key and it always touches the P key. These are very common because that market is even more price competitive. You will almost never find an original iPhone screen. The best you can hope for is the original LCD and a copy digitizer and frame for the price ranges that 99% of repair companies purchase them for. Now, a lot of people say, you know, iPhone 4s are easy, and honestly, I agree. I, but it's my personal preference that it's still a pain in the ass to do. 
don't get it wrong, I can do an iPhone 4 GSM in 10 minutes if somebody's timing me and I'm really trying to get it done without being distracted. I, but I personally find preparing iPhones to be a royal pain in the ass. There's over 50 screws, there's a bunch of light level parts. On the CDMA version, you have to tweeze out you know, little things near the camera for various antennas and put little pieces of tape back together and put the frame clips in so without the washers being you know, over on this side, it has to be on this side, so the screw can go through. I find it to be a pain in the ass. And well, it's a place where I've been a long time ago when we used different companies' parts is at 745, a customer would come in to get an iPhone repaired and we would close at 8. And knowing that this took 10 minutes, we would take it in. 7.59 comes by, the L key doesn't work. 8.15 comes by, we put another part in, and you know, you can't swipe on the bottom, but the top works. You know, 8.30 comes by, and now it's taken me a little longer to get the phone done because I'm hungry, and I really was expecting to leave at 8 and get you know, my lunch for the day at 8.02. And as, every time you touch the screen, you get an explosion of colors. And at 9 o'clock, a half hour later, again, the repair is taking longer now because I'm incredibly hungry, it, it finally works. So that's not worth saving a dollar or two. That's not even worth saving thousands of dollars over the span of a month. I'm at a point in my life where I want to use parts that just work. And it's not, it's not worth staying late. It's not worth having technicians stay late or do the same thing three times in a row when it's something that I find to be a pain in the ass to save a dollar or two. Since I find the iPhone to be a pain in the ass to repair, I don't want to be in a position where I'm opening the phone again, and I don't want you to be in that position either. So if you purchase a part from us, you're purchasing a part not from people that are just selling you an iPhone part that don't actually use them. You're purchasing it from people who literally have to stay at work late and put off eating because they bought shitty parts, which is something that we don't do. Now let's talk about one of the other problems of buying an A-minus part. A lot of the times, A-minus parts are good, and vendors always know that 90% of the time they're going to get a good part. On rare occasion, you will find a sneaky broker. These people are pieces of shit, and you will find them everywhere nowadays that A-minus parts are so popular. The sneaky broker will buy a bunch of A-minus panels, let's say 1,000 A-minus panels, and what they'll do is they'll put a laptop in front of them, and they'll plug every single one of these panels into the laptop that they get, and they'll only sell you the parts that are actually A-minus. So let's say out of a thousand panels, 300 of them wind up being A minus, which is a little higher than usual. But let's say out of those 1,000 A minus panels, 300 of them, my mistake, are actually bad, where you can visibly see a defect. What they'll do is instead of sending you a mixture of all the A minus ones, where you get some bad and some good, they'll send you the ones that they tested and looked at and knew were bad. Those get separated from the ones that were good, and you'll buy 300 panels that are all bad. Now, if you buy 300 panels that are all bad, you're either forced to sell them at cost or maybe below cost to get rid of them, or to have a returns policy for your customer where you state that you are likely to have a stuck pixel with this panel and we don't want to hear from you if you get a stuck pixel. And obviously, people are not going to like this. They're going to be ticked off and they're not going to like you as a brand and you may just wind up having to eat a lot of panels that you can't sell to people. Now, if you find a sneaky broker like this, you may tell them, well, I want my money back. I, I want to be sent good panels because I bought these and they're usually good. He'll, he'll point to the invoice and say, uh uh uh, you bought the A minus panel. Since you bought the A minus panel, we don't give a fuck about you. And technically, technically they're correct. Technically you bought an A minus product, you spent three to seven dollars a piece less on this A minus product, and because of that, you don't get the same support. Even though they know that they purposely picked out all the bad panels for you, and even though they know that you weren't expecting that, but this is very commonplace. And when you see price competition to the, on eBay, for, for example, where a panel is be, that's typically sold for $65 is being sold for you know, 55 and change, and nobody else is selling it that cheaply, you have to wonder, am I getting one of those A- patches? Because again, most of the time, the A- patch is good. And when you look at the low prices you'll find on eBay and a couple of other websites, there's simply no way to compete by selling an A product but based on price. And on sites like eBay, there is very little branding, there's very little you can do to increase your ranking outside of having a lot of low price sales. On eBay, to get higher, it's a ratio of how many people click your listing to how many people purchase it. And the best way to have a good ratio of people who click your listing to people who purchase it is to have a very cheap product. Now, sometimes you may get a screen from that 90% that are good. 
But on rare occasion, you may be the unlucky customer that gets the 10% that are bad, or even worse, you may be the unlucky customer that buys from the batch of sorted A-minus goods, so where every single one of them is bad. So for one month, a vendor could sell uh, panels where every single panel of a particular model is bad, and they don't even know it, and you don't find out until you get it. And then you have a customer that's, you said, this repair will be done by Thursday because we ordered it on Monday and this supplier is from New York, where in reality, now you have to order from a supplier in California because the New York supplier sent you an A-minus part. And then you got to tell them, oh, yeah, well, don't, don't, don't worry about it. We'll give you 20 or $30 off your repair. I'm very sorry about the delay. Now the 5 to $10 that you save buying an, a panel from one of these vendors that sells A-minus parts turns into $10, $30 lost because you overpromised the customer. So, in conclusion, think about these things and think about the trend in the industry of purchasing A-minus panels to be price competitive and the trend in Taipei or China where vendors will sort through A-minus panels and only sell eBay vendors the junk panels knowing that they're purchasing an A-minus on their invoice. Think about that before you go for the cheapest one and think about how much it's a, how much that $5 you save now could cost you later. In conclusion, thank you for listening, and good night.